In-depth, investigative. This is KXAN News Today. Another cold morning as we get closer and closer to seeing some rain this week. Good morning, I'm Tom Miller. And I'm Jayla Washington. And for Sally Hernandez, meteorologist Kristen Curry here to rain on my ice skating plans. Yeah. I know, that's the, that's the bummer. It's timing wise, not great, but we do need this rain. Yeah. So let me show you what's happening outside. Whittlesea Landscape Supplies, why the camera there on Round Rock, showing quiet conditions. Everything looks good. Not quite as cold as where we were yesterday. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's chilly out there, but we're not seeing nearly as many of us down to freezing. Temperature warm up a good 5 to 15 degrees warmer than yesterday. Leaves most of us in those mid 30s to low 40s. 35 Marble, Marble Falls, 42 in Austin, 40 in Bastrop, 41 in Flutonia. So these temperatures again warranting a jacket, but not down to freezing. As far as your day planner goes from the 40s to the 60s, we spend most of the day in the 60s. Forecast high 67. That will be the warmest temperature you'll find in this week's seven day forecast. It is going to be um, a little cooler tomorrow and then much cooler once we hit the later part of the week behind that cold front. So coming up, rain chances through midweek. These will begin for some of us tomorrow. We're expecting most of us to see rain by Friday. We'll talk a little bit more about when and how much and then just how far those temperatures will fall behind this incoming cold front. We'll fill you in on the details coming up in your first morning forecast. Thank you, Kristen. A Texas woman seeking a court ruling to get an emergency abortion will have to go out of state for the procedure. Yeah, the state's highest court blocked a lower court ruling that would have allowed Dallas mother Kate Cox to get an abortion after a diagnosis of a deadly fetal abnormality. But there are still questions about what this really means for the larger issue of medical exemptions to that law. The Texas Supreme Court says that her doctor did not establish that abortion is needed in her reasonable medical judgment. This is despite her doctor very much saying that she believes that the abortion is necessary for Cox's health and future fertility. Court did clarify some of the standards allowing medical abortions. It gave substantial deference to doctors' judgments. It also says women do not need to seek a judge's opinion if their doctor deems an abortion appropriate. Now, Cox's lawyers argue the latest ruling is not only jeopardizing the health of the mother, but also her ability to grow her family in the future. Nancy Northup tells NBC her client is lucky to have the means to leave Texas to get an abortion in the first place. As difficult as Kate's situation is, she had the means to be able to leave the state of Texas. That is not the case for most people. They don't have the financial means, they can't take the time off from work, they have childcare. All of those things make it very, very difficult. So while it was extremely difficult for Kate to do this, it is impossible for others. There is another case that's awaiting judgment by the Texas Supreme Court called Zorowski versus Texas. In it, 20 women are suing the state. They claim the law does not give doctors enough freedom to determine when abortion is a proper medical treatment. Now, the court may not rule on that case, though, until June. Well, Round Rock Police want to know if you have seen this woman. Her name is Amy Castellanos. She has been missing since 3 in the morning Sunday. Police say the 39-year-old was last seen leaving her home complaining of abdominal pain and that she was headed to a clinic. The 2019 Toyota van she was driving was found nearby. If you know anything, you are asked to call police. A former Travis County Assistant District Attorney tells KXAN he is running against the current DA, Jose Garza. Jeremy Silestein is a current defense attorney. He says he's going to run as a Democrat. And yesterday was that last day for potential candidates to file. Garza launched his re-election campaign over the summer. We have reached out to him for comment and are waiting for a response. Former President Donald Trump's civil trial, fraud trial, is set to pick back up today. And it comes as former president says that he will not be testifying in it anymore. This comes as special counsel Jack Smith asked the Supreme Court to decide whether the former president has immunity from prosecution for his actions when seeking to overturn the 2020 election. Trump's trial for the January 6th attack on the Capitol is scheduled for March. Last week, the federal judge presiding over the election interference case denied Trump's motion to dismiss his indictment on presidential immunity and constitutional grounds, prompting the former president to appeal and ask for the case to be put on hold. 
So in order to prevent a lengthy appeals process, special counsel Smith is asking the Supreme Court to decide now whether Trump is immune or not. Austin City Council will meet today and among the discussion, just how quickly the city is growing. In a presentation for members today, it says the city's population has doubled every 20 to 25 years, but it says the growth has outpaced growth in housing. That meeting starts at nine this morning at City Hall. And going in depth, as the population grows here, it does around Texas as well. A new report from the census shows the languages most families are speaking at home is changing. It says more Texans are speaking a language other than English at home. About 28% speak Spanish at home. That's over 7 million people. Just over 6% speak Asian, Pacific Islander, or Indo-European languages. You can find a full breakdown on our website. Just search Census Bureau Estimates on KXAN.com. A partial building collapse in New York. Hear from a witness as apartments are left open and in some cases nearly dangling off. Texas giving out more money for survivors of National Guard members lost while working as part of Operation Lone Star. How this could help members in the future. The brain of a mass shooter in Maine is undergoing testing at Boston University. Robert Card killed himself back in October after police say he killed 18 people and injured several others in Lewiston, Maine. Police say he opened fire at a bar and grill as well as a bowling alley. According to Boston University, researchers are testing for a chronic, traumatic, progressive, often irreversible disease known as CTE. That's in the brain. It's found in people with a history of repetitive head trauma. Symptoms of CTE can include impaired judgment and problems with impulse control, aggression, depression, and more. The New York Times reports soldiers told them that Card worked for many years at an Army hand grenade training range. They say there he was, quote, rocked by thousands of brain jarring explosions. Look at this. Everyone miraculously walked away after a partial collapse of a seven story apartment building in New York City. Just stunning to see that. Emergency crews gave the all clear late last night after they did not find any victims trapped under this rubble. Well, then take a look at the aftermath. The collapse left bedrooms exposed up and down the building. It happened shortly before three yesterday afternoon. The cause still unknown. A man who works at a nearby deli recalls the moments he saw it coming down. So someone that came in the store screaming, oh, come outside, come outside, look, a, bu a building collapsed. So I rush outside and all you see is the big um, debris cloud of smoke and all the stuff in the air and people are running and screaming. Stunning there. Well, a witness tells NBC News that people inside the bodega at street level knew something was wrong when they heard a loud noise and then a water pipe burst. They say they ran to safety minutes before the corner ended up collapsing. Plus, people on hold with 911 in Austin. Why the police department says it is starting to see improvement. Plus, more street takeovers. The latest three men facing charges after being linked last week. Spurs trying to snap that long losing streak and Texas women. A change in the schedule as they get set to hit the road. I've got more on that coming up. Live look outside this morning, waiting on sunrise. That'll be 718 sunset about 531 this evening. More cloud cover expected today, so that'll dampen some of that sunshine, but still warm. We'll talk more about those temperatures here at home in just a couple of minutes. Wanted to update you on the weather on the other side of the country. The storm system that drops deadly tornadoes in Tennessee over the weekend went on to produce several inches of snow in parts of Vermont, created a potentially dangerous situation for drivers. Police even asking people to take survival gear if they chose to drive. The same storm system also produced several EF1 tornadoes on Sunday in Alabama and North Carolina. They left a lot of damage to trees, cars and homes. The powerful storm hit Tennessee on Saturday with multiple tornadoes blamed for killing at least six people. The winds destroyed homes there. The roofs and walls knocked down. Nashville and the town of Clarksville were the hardest hit. Thank you, Kristen. With the holiday gatherings, often come the illnesses. December marking the start of that peak flu season nationwide. Some Austin pharmacists are already seeing these cases spike. According to the CDC, peak flu season runs through February. Last year, the Texas Department of State Health Services saw its highest flu positivity rate in early December, 
reaching more than 24 percent. So far this season, a lot better. The positivity rate climbing above 6 percent as of Friday. At Terrytown Pharmacy, pharmacists are seeing an uptick, though, in positive cases for flu, COVID-19, even strep. There's a lot more people that are interacting with each other, which naturally leads, um, even before the pandemic, to more you know, flu and respiratory illness. For those traveling for the holidays, experts say you want to do frequent hand washing, testing, and masking. All resources to help you stay healthy. The invites for Christmas parties starting to feel maybe like they are adding up for work, friends, family, even the kids. I know we're both going to a Christmas party this weekend. Exactly. KXAM party. But uh, one thing that we're looking at is that not every holiday party invite might be good for you. Listen, somebody had to say it, okay? 77% <laughs> of people from a recent survey said they confessed to accepting an invitation to an event they really didn't even want to go to just yeah. because they were worried about stirring up some drama. But ahead on today, new data out from a Journal of Personality and Social Psychology study found more than 2,000 participants might ease your mind. If you don't say yes to every invitation, then what that does is it gives you the opportunity to really invest quality time in the parties and the events that you go to. You're not burnt out, you're, you, you feel great about being there. You can really be present instead of feeling as though it's some sort of obligation. Well, the experts are dishing out the data and advice only this morning on today. I was talking to my Holiday Plus one yesterday and I was like, we got a lot of stuff going on this week. And he's like, I don't want to go. I don't want to do any of this. Uh -huh. I was like, well, if I have to, so do you. Yeah. I will be your plus one. <laughs> I am always you. down for a party. I know. The more right? the better. Exactly. The more the merrier. Exactly. Right? You know what? I'll say just sort of with this in mind, like we have the KXA and Holiday Party this weekend and my wife was like, I'm going to hang out at home with the, with our son. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. You get burned out totally. fast, but once you're there, it's fine. Yeah, yeah you know? I agree. Yeah, you so. can just pop in, have a drink, yeah. a handful of popcorn, and then go home. <laughs> Let me show you what's going on with your forecast here because uh, it will feel a little bit more like the holidays this weekend with temperatures dropping, but today will be the warmest day of the next seven. Clouds and radar not showing anything around us yet. Temperature wise, still chilly at 42, but not nearly as cold as what we had yesterday. Yesterday, was the first official freeze in downtown Austin. Dropped to 31 out of Camp Mabry. Record cold added uh, Austin Bergstrom for the day. They got down to 24. So relatively speaking, not quite as cold, but still chilly enough to grab that jacket. We're going to warm up nicely here through the day with highs getting back into the upper 60s. The thing about today, though, is here come the clouds. We're not going to see nearly as much sunshine with mostly the partly cloudy skies expected from start to finish today. Let's talk about the changes to come because today will probably be one of the last days of completely dry weather as some of the rain starts to work through tomorrow. A little disturbance rolling through brings in some of that scattered rain tomorrow little drier Thursday, but not completely dry. Still a good 10 to 20% that we're going to snag some of that rain, although this model keeps it a little too far west. I think the hill country is still going to be favored for at least a couple spot showers on Thursday. And then comes the main event. Friday still looking to be very wet here. We've got a 90% chance of widespread rain. Some of this rain could be heavy. Now, temperatures warm enough to keep it all liquid. Same cannot be set up in the panhandle in case you got any plans up there on Friday. And then that rain will continue. Looks like through the day Friday, but tapers some Friday evening into Saturday. So not as convinced that Friday night will be as wet as, let's say, Friday afternoon, maybe even Friday morning there. So hopefully as we get closer, we can kind of narrow in on the exact timing, and that'll give you a better idea of how you can plan out your Friday and Saturday morning. Rainfall potential still about a half an inch to an inch and a half. Isolated pockets of more. Really, those pockets of heavier rain are just kind of where is the are those thunderstorms going to set up? Most of this is just plain old rain, but a few isolated storms could bring some heavy rain at times. Flash flood threat still low, one out of four for your Friday. Seven day forecast, mostly cloudy in upper 60s today. Low chance of rain Wednesday, Thursday with more clouds and sun. Temperatures in the upper 50s to mid 60s. Cold front though drops us down to the 50s Friday, Saturday, and we'll take that all the way through the weekend. Overnight lows above freezing in the 40s and even low 50s for the next six to seven mornings. All right, Kristen, thank you. Texas just paid out money to the families of four different National Guard members who died while serving in Operation Lone Star. Attorney General Ken Paxson's office announced the benefits awarded. 
During the regular legislative session, lawmakers passed a bill to close a loophole on this. The legislation was named after specialist Bishop Evans. He died in April of last year while trying to save two migrants from the Rio Grande near Eagle Pass. The new law allows for retroactive payment to survivors of those who, who were lost during Operation Lone Star of half a million dollars. Here at home, fewer people are getting on hold with 911. The Austin Police Department says it is starting to see improvements. And this comes after a recent wave of new hires at the Emergency Communication Center. Some good news. KXAN's Brianna Hollis gives us an update on staffing for such an important job. Please hold for the next available call taker. Imagine hearing that after dialing 911 while this is happening feet away from you. That was Rafael's experience when he called 911 during the street takeovers on South Lamar earlier this year. This is crazy. This is like, are we, are we in Austin? You know, is this 2023? We're not 100% staffed, but we will be close to 100% staffed in the next two to three weeks. After hearing that statement on December 1st, we wanted to see what the numbers say. Before we do that, let's clarify the difference between a 911 operator and a dispatcher. Operators answer 911 calls directly versus dispatchers who communicate directly with police officers. Here's the latest update on APD 911 staffing. According to police, there are currently 21 call taker vacancies out of 104 available positions, a 20% vacancy rate. Let's compare that to this summer when there was a roughly 50% vacancy rate for operators. We were behind and we've made real progress in that regard. APD also says it's now answering 93% of calls within 15 seconds. In July, that number was 69%. But in 2019, before the staffing issue started, the number was 99%. I'm glad, I'm very glad that there is an improvement. But Rafael still worries if something else happens, whether the system can handle it. I do wonder, though, if incidents like that could jam up the system. Brianna Hollis, KXAN News. In a statement, APD said the increased staffing numbers have resulted in improved morale around the center. And the additional staff has allowed call takers to have more time in between calls, effectively reducing stress levels. If you do find yourself on hold with 911, remember you should stay on the line. If you hang up and then call back, you're going to be put at the back of the queue. We reach out to other departments in the greater Austin area about staffing levels for their 911 operations. And we heard back from Kyle, Cedar Park, Round Rock, and Leander Police. They all reported no holdups when people call 911 in those areas. Spokesperson for Leander Police said if there is a major emergency with an overwhelming level of 911 calls, there's a chance those calls would bounce to Cedar Park 911 so they don't go unanswered. We all know how expensive the holidays can be and add in everything being way more expensive now because of inflation. More people now, though, taking on second jobs just to get by. That's according to a study from USA Today. It states roughly 5 million Americans hold one full-time job and one part-time job, and that is an all-time high. Nearly 2 million held two part-time gigs, and about 400,000 had two full-time jobs. Some say they are bracing for layoffs, which tend to happen more at the beginning of the year, and some are just seasonal holiday workers. The study also says remote workers are more likely to have another job. That is thanks to increased flexibility, but sometimes they do so in secret. This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. Good morning, team. Texas women head off for their first true road game of the season. They'll play at Arizona tomorrow night. Longhorns number five in the AP poll for the second straight week at 10 and 0. This is also a change in the calendar of sorts as final exams came to an end on Monday. That means a little more time. So that means the coach has to be creative. Players just happy. Just spend some time together instead of just going home to an apartment looking at four walls because you get a lot of time and, and it's what I don't like about this time of the year. I love the structure and discipline of going to class and study hall and practice and tank being open and going to eat and all that. And now we won't have that. So it's just, uh, it's a challenge for sure. I actually like it a lot because being a student athlete, as everyone probably knows, is pretty stressful, you know. You got your whole day taken up with practice, academic study hall. Just to just get to play basketball without the academics part is kind of fun for a little month. 
Texas men 19th in the latest poll. They'll be on the road, but not a road game. They'll play in Houston on Saturday against LSU. LSU led by former Longhorn Will Baker in Houston last night at the Toyota Center. Spurs and Rockets playing, and for the Spurs, well, Trying to snap that 16-game losing streak. Rockets, though, vastly improved from last year. Alpi Sengen with the three right there. Rockets up by three. He had 15. Here comes Wemby flying in and crushing it. Gets fouled. And then the offensive rebound. Really, the offensive kind of slap against the glass. 15 points, 18 rebounds. But the Rockets, they do pull away. The block shot and Tari Eason with the run out. Rockets win it. Spurs losing streak at 17, but it's not the longest. The Pistons have lost 20 in a row. And tomorrow, the official SEC schedule will be released, but it was confirmed on Monday. Something we reported a couple of weeks ago. Georgia at Texas will be October 19th at Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. Back to you. Thanks, Roger. For those listening on the KXAN Today podcast, thanks for being with us. Here's what we're tracking at 5. New details on a man seen carrying a gun outside two Austin schools. How the school district is planning to handle the situation.